What's going on pirates? Welcome back to another Sea of Thieves video. Today I want to talk with you about how you can speedrun an Athena's with efficiency. Be sure to stick around because this video is full of tips and tricks and we're starting right now. Every good Athena's voyage starts out at the Pirate Lord who offers you a random selection of voyages. But which one do you choose? Always go for the Devil's Roar option and there are a few good reasons for this. For starters, you get one and a half times the reputation of a regular Athena's voyage, meaning you only need 62 Ashen Athena's to reach Pirate Legend level 10, instead of the 92 regular Athena's. The other reason is because the size of the Devil's Roar is significantly smaller than the main Sea of Thieves, allowing you to complete your Athena's very quickly. If the Pirate Lord doesn't have any Devil's Roar voyages available, switch servers or buy up all the regular Athenas and wait till 6 a.m. the next morning when his inventory refreshes. When you're ready to start your voyage, make sure you begin at Ancient Spire or Galleon's Grave. Sailing from an outpost like Golden Sands will easily add 20 to 25 minutes of time just traveling to the Roar. Server hop until you get a good start. It should also go without saying, but make sure you stock up on supplies before you head out into the Roar. Resources are pretty scarce unless you come across a barrel or rowboat. As you're plotting out your route, mark it on the map. Commit it to memory, then remove the markings. This is just a precaution in case you get boarded at some point. You don't want other pirates knowing your progress. When choosing your ship liveries, make sure you stay under the radar. Don't sail with the default skins, as this will draw the attention of every mid-level pirate in the server who wants to pick on noobs. Also, don't go flexing those fancy legend skins you just acquired. Any experienced pirate who sees you will know exactly what you're doing. And guess what? You just painted a giant target on your back. To prove my point, here's an example where we intercepted a legend doing his gilded Athenas. He's moored out in the open, on the final island, flexing Athena skins. This, in in this well. pirate also had all of his maps circled to confirm our suspicions. Don't do this. Alright, we got some of the basics out of the way, let's get into the speed run. I'm going to drop a little timer in the corner here so you know how quickly these can be completed. If you want to take a guess on what that time might be, leave a comment below. Also, while you're there, you might want to consider hitting that red subscribe button. Each Athena's will consist of four different quest types. Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, Cargo Runs, and Riddles. Because the Devil's Roar is so small, several of the quests will double up on the same island. At most, you will only have to visit six islands, plus the final Athena location. Getting to know the larger islands in the Roar is also key to a good speedrun. Places to park, merchants, riddle locations, as well as typical spawn spots. Over time as you do these, they will become second nature, but if you're a newer legend, I've put together some overlays to help you out. Link in the description. The most efficient way to complete an Athena's is to do the tap and go technique. Essentially, this means leaving all treasure and cargo behind. Remember, your end goal here is the Athena's chest, not getting caught up in the treasure. You will have plenty of time for gold later. Riddle quests always spawn on the large islands. There are only a handful of landmarks and paintings, and with repetition, you will eventually memorize them all. This greatly speeds up your Athena's runs. Until then, I recommend you look into Rare Thief to help find the solutions. This website has a fantastic interactive map that lists all of the riddle locations. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. The gold hoarders can be a real pain to deal with, especially on the larger islands. To keep your time to a minimum, try and memorize the X-Mark locations. This will greatly improve your efficiency and you won't have to deal with any of the skeletons that spawn. Obviously the smaller the island, the easier this is to do. Alright, I, I grabbed this bad boy. I know I literally just finished telling you guys, leave all the treasure behind, but for these, I make an exception. They are quite rare, and if you manage to collect a hundred of them, you're going to unlock one of the rarest titles in the game, the Hoarder of Treasured Tears. Now I'm a completionist, and I want this, so don't judge me. 
I suppose this is a good time to address why people dislike the roar. Obviously it's volcanoes. But they aren't too bad if you handle them properly. When the island you're on starts quaking, immediately drop everything you're doing and get back to your ship. Quaking doesn't mean the island is going to erupt, but it's a potential sign. Only when you hear the loud rumble and see smoke is that island going to erupt for sure. When this happens, you can sail over to the large black rocks that surround each island and wait, or head over to the next island on your voyage and backtrack later. If you're curious, eruptions generally last 5 to 8 minutes. Right now, you're probably wondering why I'm anchored at this erupting island. I didn't follow my own advice. I ignored the signs, it took a few extra seconds to tap the last chest, and it nearly got me killed. Fortunately, I followed my other advice and stocked up on supplies. Finally, we have the Order of Souls. I guarantee at least one of these quests will be located on a large island, and it's usually Ashen Reaches or Devil's Thirst. Because of the size, you may not have the option to use your cannons. Instead, lure them over active geysers, and use firebombs to make quick work of any wave. Once you have completed all of the voyages, you will receive a map to the final Athena Island. This is a good time to bring up the possibility of thieving pirates. If at any point during your Athenas you have spotted another ship in the roar, it's pretty safe to assume that they know you are doing an Athena. Pirates really only go to the roar for final tall tales or for Athenas. If you drop your chest off at Morrill's Peak, there's a pretty good chance the trap has been set up for you. Don't worry. If it's me setting the trap for you, I'm going to screw it up, and you're fine. But you might not be so lucky with other pirates. If you're concerned, head back to Ancient Spire or Galleon's Grave just to be safe. One other thing I want to mention. If you're doing these voyages with a crew, cannon over pirates to the islands while someone continues to sail. Let them clear out whatever needs to be done and mermaid back to the ship. If this is done right, you can have substantial impact on how quickly you complete in Athenas. This is assuming, of course, nobody dies. One hour and 18 minutes. I haven't done an Athenas in over a year, but this was by far my fastest time on record, even with the detour and unexpected volcano. How close were your guesses? Well, I hope this video helps you out on your next Athenas run. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.